Hello everyone, my name is Wei and welcome to my channel. We all know MidJourney can generate stunning product photography images. For example, take a look at this beauty product image generated by MidJourney. It has really great lighting effects. But what we want is a thin image based on our own products. For example, this is our product, an eye cream. We can use MidJourney's image reference feature to make the image as close to our product as possible. For example, the scene and some of the text in this picture are close to what we want, but it's impossible to reproduce our product exactly through MidJourney. However, I managed to create this image using MidJourney and the ConfUI workflow I developed. MidJourney generated the scene for me, and the ConfUI workflow helped fit the product into the scene perfectly. It adjusted the lighting and shadows of the product while keeping all the details including the text. Thanks to your suggestions, I've updated my workflow to version 2. In this video, I share how to generate the background of a product with MidJourney, briefly describe the process I used to make this image, and go over all the updates to the second version of the workflow. Let's start by looking at how to generate the product background image you want with MidJourney or Stable Diffusion. Here's the prompt formula. By replacing material, texture pattern, and shape structure in the formula, you can generate various types of podiums that draw attention to the product and make it look more upscale. The other parts of the prompt formula can be customized to produce a product background that better suits your needs. Take this background, for example. The podium is made of acrylic with a glossy texture and a rectangular shape, perfect for tech gadgets. It's set against a white background with soft diffuse light, giving it a modern and a minimalist look. Once I had this background, I used my Comfy workflow to incorporate the products, resulting in this image. Now look at this background, a rustic wooden podium with a natural texture and a round shape, placed in a cozy, warm background with natural light, designed for organic skincare products. The scene evokes a natural, rustic feel. Incorporating the product using my Comfia workflow resulted in this image. If you don't want to include the podium in the background, you can use this formula. The prompt for this background image was written using this formula. Or you can give MidJourney your product image as a reference to generate the product's image similar to yours. Then remove the product to make a great background image. For example, the background image I used at the beginning of the video actually contains products in the original image. I removed the product. I've written an article on getting MidJourney to generate images for product photography, and I'll put the link in the description below the video. Okay, let's move on to the process of making this image. First, let's go to ConfUI. The first step is to upload our product image. Then, we'll upload the background image. Write a prompt to describe what will happen when we put the product into the background image. Make sure the group product and background is open first. It's on the right side. The generate background group should be closed because we've already uploaded a background and it should look better than one generated by stable diffusion. Of course, you can also activate this group and try generating a background image with stable diffusion. Next, Go to the right side and run the workflow. This node group removes the background from the product image, resizes the product and background images, and adjusts their exposure as needed. Next, open the locate product group and run the workflow. Use the three sliders on the left to adjust the size and the position of the product image in the background image. After positioning, activate the relight group to relight the image. Relighting will cause color and brightness changes, which we fix with a series of nodes on the right to restore the color and brightness. With the image compare node, we can clearly see the changes before and after relighting. The left side of the product is illuminated by the light, but the details and text on the product are also lost. Next, activate the gray paint group. We want to restore some details by repainting, but didn't get much detail back. This is mainly because the details of the image are already good, 
and I don't want to drastically change the original content of the image, so the denoising strength is set very small. Then open the Restore Detail group, ready to restore the details and the text on the product. Because I don't want to use the repainted image to restore details, the Boolean value here is kept false. Go to the Restore Detail group and run the workflow. Fine-tune some parameters to achieve the desired effect. Alright, this is the final image. If you want to understand the logic of this workflow in more detail, check out my last video. I'll put the link below. Next, let's look at the updates to the second version of the workflow. Most of these updates came from your suggestions. Thanks to Dai who provided suggestions on my OpenArt workflow page. Most of the updates are the result of his valuable suggestions. YouTube users Ivan Ecom and Liulis78 also provided great suggestions. The first update is replacing the image remove BG node used for removing background with a more accurate by RefNet node. If you think the accuracy is not enough, you can use InspireNet. Take a look at the demo on the GitHub page. The right part of this picture shows the effect of using it to remove the hair background. However, it can be very slow the first time it runs, which is why I don't use it often. But it does have very high accuracy. The second update is adding three flow sliders to the image blend node. This makes it easier to adjust the position and size of the product by sliding the slider like this, instead of typing in numbers like before. The third update is the addition of a new llama remover node in the generate background group which resolves any extra pixels that may be created around the edges of the product. The Llama Remover removes these pixels from the product before we paste our own product on it, so we don't have to create extra pixels. If you have excess pixels, you can expand the mask with a Grow Mask with Blur node and then perform the removal. The fourth update is addition of auto-adjust node to the relight group, which helps fix color casting during relighting. In this example, you can see that after lighting, the image had a serious color problem that wasn't solved by the first two nodes. I set the strength of the auto-adjust node to 100, and it automatically adjusted the color, brightness, and the contrast of the image. Alright, that's all for this update. Remember to update ConfigUI before using the latest workflow and install the missing nodes. If you have any good suggestions for this workflow, please share them in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you next time.